And um, so we're gonna we're gonna bless the palms, and we'll start this, and we'll do the liturgy of the palm out here, and then we'll process with glory, laud, and honor into the church, and we'll lead with the with the crucifer, and then the trumpet, and then the choir, and then the people, and the priest will take up the rear. So everyone can go in singing, and Sammy will pick us up on the organ, and um, we'll continue that bit. And then we enter into the liturgy of the Passion, and so the priest will stay in the back for that initial prayer as we come up with the cross, okay? So just so that you understand how this is kind of orchestrated. Um, one of the things that we sometimes do is bless all the palms uh, in the basket together, and then we pass them out, but I think it's, it's much easier to... Uh, to have everybody have their own palm initially, and we'll just bless them across, across the crowd, okay? It all works the same. God is so amazing. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll just on this gorgeous day, I'll give you a moment to, um, to draw in your breath and to prepare for service. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. And they brought it to Jesus and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sat Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God, joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Palms. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to, our, to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palms along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us, let us go forth in peace.
Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up for joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have celebrated the Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus told his disciples that in Jerusalem he would enter into his glory through his passion. Let us now enter into this central mystery of our faith. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his sufferings and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens. Wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have not set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm from Psalm 31. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. My times are in your hands. Make your face to shine upon your servant. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though as though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. may be seated for the reading of the Passion, the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did with the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going and has been, has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then the apostles began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among the apostles as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied me three times that you know me. Jesus said to his apostles, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. Jesus said to them, 
But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While Jesus was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around Jesus saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched the slave's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then the crowd seized Jesus and led him away. The crowd brought Jesus into the high priest's house, but Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl... Seeing Peter in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing Peter, said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with the prisoner, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while Peter was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it struck him? They kept heaping many other insults on Jesus. When day came, the assembly of the elders brought pe- uh, elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought Jesus to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus replied, if I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? Jesus said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse Jesus, saying, We have found this man perverting our nation bidding us to pay taxes to the emperors, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of Jews? Jesus answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea. From Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he heard that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, 
Pilate sent Jesus off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about Jesus and was hoping to see him perform some sign. Herod questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt and mocked him. Then Herod put an elegant robe on Jesus and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, this man has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then the elders all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us. Barabbas was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed him again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But the elders kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that Jesus should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. Pilate released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. Then he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wounds that never bore and the breast that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right hand, and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, if you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over Jesus that read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly. For we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last.
please be seated. Well, we've finally made it. The biggest week of the year is here. Those who have been following my March Madness themed lantern articles, we finally reached that final four, the championship week. And when I look back on these last five and a half weeks, it seems in some ways like the time has just flown by. And at the same time, it's been a long Lent. Take a breath in and out. We've made it. Welcome to Holy Week. Over five years ago, I met with the Diocese Commission on Ministry for the first time to begin the process of discerning or figuring out if I was indeed called to ministry in the church. And at that meeting, the four of us who all aspired to start the process, we sat around a big, large conference table with the 12 members of the commission and our newly elected bishop. And Bishop Russell asked us each to introduce ourselves to say our name and our favorite day in the liturgical calendar, and why. It took me about three seconds to know what my answer would be. And when it was my turn, I proudly shared that my favorite day was today, Palm Sunday. To my surprise, I was greeted with a bunch of confused looks as though I had picked the wrong service or something, I was beginning to second-guess myself. Thankfully, I didn't let their looks fully deter me, and I owned it, and I continued to explain that, yes, I love this day. Palm Sunday, or Passion Sunday, as you may know it, it's one of only two Sundays in our entire calendar when we bring out these festive, red vestments and altar hangings because it is a festival and I believe the red color brings out this special buzz in the air it's the color we use at ordination and this speaks to the collective realization that we indeed have reached the most exciting week of our church year even as a child I felt the excitement of the week and that rush that started on Palm Sunday. I remember vividly parading down Highway 98 in the middle of Fort Walton Beach, waving palms and chanting, Hosanna, blessed is the king, with the spring break traffic honking and accompanying our cries and our songs. I do not know if the people stuck in traffic driving to the beach knew that we were celebrating Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But what I did know, and I do know, is that on that day, I was proclaiming to the world that passed by that Jesus was my king. Holy Week starts off with this proclamation. We are drawn into the celebration and are reminded that Jesus entered Jerusalem for Passover. But not alone, he was accompanied by his disciples and many followers who believed and proclaimed that he was their king. But he wasn't just any old king. No, Luke says he came in riding a young and this year, Mother Susan really wanted a live donkey for our service. And immediately, people were worried. Well, how would the donkey behave? Would he stand still for the service? Would he make a lot of noise? Would we have a lot to clean up? I really wish we could have made it work. And I, and fingers are crossed, that next year we'll have a donkey. Because the thing is, the donkey chaos would have added so much to the realness of our procession. 
Jesus' colt, it was brand new, young, packaging still on it. No one had ever ridden that donkey. And I know little about horses and donkeys, but what I do know is that the young ones, they need to be broken in before just anyone can ride them. It's the last thing you would want a king to ride. Because kings, they rode trained horses, ones that were broken in. Many people had ridden them before. But not Jesus, because Jesus wasn't an ordinary king. Jesus came in on a rowdy donkey, one he was breaking in for the first time. And people, they laid down their clothes on the ground for that horse to walk on, literally paving a new way for the new king. And those people, they rejoiced, crying out, Hosanna, or save us. They followed Jesus, and they proclaimed his truth, the one that they had been witnessing. It was an active march into Jerusalem that day. And though the marchers were calmly proclaiming, it wasn't peaceful to everyone. And some of the other religious leaders in the group, they began to worry about what this new king would do. They didn't understand Jesus because everything he he was doing was so new to them. It makes a lot of sense, actually, that they might feel threatened by Jesus' growing popularity and influence and his newness. His followers, they're rising as quick as the latest TikTok trend, and they have to make it stop. Because you see, everything they've ever known, the systems and structures of life, their relationship to God, their understanding of kingship, it is all threatened by this man on the wild donkey. And so they ask him, and they plead with him, make it all stop. Jesus, can't you just tell your people to shut up? And Jesus says, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. That even if they silenced all the people, all of God's creation would respond and make it known that Jesus is God. Whether these religious leaders knew it or not, their and the world had already changed. Jesus will continue to gain popularity, and no one will know how to stop him. So we'll kill him. And that brings me to the other reason Palm Sunday is my favorite day. It's so real. We, the people who just sang all glory, laud, and honor to our king and proclaimed him as our Lord, were the same people that just a few minutes ago shouted, crucify him, crucify him. The passion is dramatized because it beckons all of us into the story. It places us in the crowd, the same crowd who stood behind Jesus in his entrance into Jerusalem, but then turned our back on him at the hour of his need. We cannot escape the drama of the passion. It is our story. And it's far too easy to skip past the passion, to jump from the festive entry into Jerusalem to the joy of the resurrection. Because we already know who the champion will be. But we need the passion in this entire Holy Week to appreciate the pastoral mystery that's unfolding in our lives. This story, this passion story, is the meat and the essence of this week. It's why we'll hear it more than once throughout Holy Week. It's the story that we should know as well as that other big one we know. You know, the one where Mary and Joseph can't find any room in an inn. For every time that the drama is told, we're invited to contemplate the times in our life where we have turned our backs 
upon Christ. The times when we have denied him or his love. When we have failed to help our neighbor or stand behind the marginalized and the oppressed. The times when we have simply been passive and complacent. We bring these times into this week, into the drama, so that we may leave them at the cross and celebrate our own redemption and resurrection on that glorious Sunday. And as we enter this holy week, may we remember that Jesus has never and will never turn his back on us. For even when he was on the cross, he called, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. May we walk humbly with him throughout this very special Holy Week. Amen. The prayers of the people are in your bulletin. Christ, we pray that you would hear our prayers and graft in our minds the same mind that is in you, that we might be vessels of your humility and grace. Lord Jesus, you emptied yourself, trading in the form of God for the form of a slave. We pray for the church, for all the people and ministers, to form us into the church that empties itself for others and for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you were born in human likeness and found in human form. We pray for the whole fam human family, for the nations of the earth, for the victims of war, especially Ukrainians, and for all who live in the midst of disaster, famine, or terror. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, even after humbling yourself in your incarnation, you hum humble yourself even to the point of death. We pray for our nation, for our leaders, for all the people who have lived within these borders. Bless us with your humility. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, your humility and your love for us was so broad and deep, it cost you your life. We pray for those who love, who have died, and as you were highly exalted, may they rest with you in glory. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray in your name, O oh Lord, for those who are hungry, sick, or hurting in any way, especially Jimmy, Ashton, Stella, Sue, Pat, Sheridan, Estrita, Barbara, Bonnie, Jan, Maya, Karen, Lurleen, Carolyn, Henry, and Sally. Jan, Jan, and Connie. Give them the gift of healing, strength, and life. Lord, in your mercy. For those celebrating birthdays, Bruce, Cheryl, Brooke, Libby, Billy, Michelle, Linda, and Tracy. For those celebrating wedding anniversaries, Dwayne and Connie Billiard, Dan and Heather Bloom. For those serving in our armed forces, especially Cody, Nicholas, John, Logan, RJ, Ian, Kyle, JJ, Harry, Sean, 
Mark, John, Will, Samuel, and Hunter. Why? We pray to you, Lord, in your mercy. You humbled yourself in the manger, and you humbled yourself in the cross. And to you, O Lord, we bend our knee with those above and those below, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share a sign of God's peace with your neighbor. Peace. Well, again, good morning. It's good to see everybody, and um, it's always, as, as Ansley says, such a great service, um, and I think it really does the job of preparing us for the week that, that stands in front of us. For those of you who have enjoyed a helpful Lent, who really kind of took this opportunity this year to, to dive into it and to say some prayers to investigate what's going on inside of you and how, how you are with God and with the world, um, this week is going to be wonderful. And for those of you who haven't yet, it's not too late. Holy Week is kind of all of Lent put together into, into one space. And so um, in worship together and in worship on your own, this is a time to kind of journey with Jesus and to be reminded of the Paschal mystery, the mystery that in all of life we sort of cruise along and then there is a death and then there is a rising. Um, and to see that in our Lord's life is important. So we would invite you this week to come to the Trigium, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, to come to the Maundy Thursday service on Thursday at 6 p.m. and experience what it was for our Lord to say goodbye to his friends, to give us those words of institution that feed us every week. And for some of you to have your feet washed by the Lord who would deign to become human. And then on Friday, we enter into his death at noon, and then on Saturday evening, there is the Easter Vigil. And um, 
So the Easter Vigil, uh, for those who aren't familiar, is considered to be the most important service of the year. Um, but because Easter Sunday is the next day, uh, a lot of people miss it. So I would invite you to come to that service where it starts outside, it starts in the graveyard, and we will light the fire, that eternal fire, and then come into this darkened chapel, into this darkened tomb, and we will say some of the stories of our salvation history with children and with adults. And then there will be a baptism, and then there will be joy. And that is uh, the mystery of our faith, those three days, the Paschal mystery. So you're invited to those. And for those of you who can't make the Friday noonday service, um, we invite you to come to Friday for the 6 p.m. Stations of the Cross. And there will be uh, going all around the church and in the church, and it takes about 45 minutes. So I invite you to that as a, as a in lieu of. And then, of course, Sunday morning, um, Easter morning with all the, all the stops. So um, do, do plan your, your week. Know that Christ is with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, who by his suffering and death became the author of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou dost create heaven and earth, and did make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. We do not presume to come to this side table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the Lord's table. All are welcome.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Receive the blessing. Life is short, and we never have enough time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. Oh, be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thank you. Yay. Good, good, good.